Hi, we're going to build a platformer game in the default game engine. By following this tutorial series you will learn skills allowing you to make many different kinds of games with platforming involved and how to make a fully functional game in general. I will go very slowly explaining everything that might be needed at a given step, but I will assume you already are familiar with basic concepts and building blocks regarding default. If not, I have separate videos for beginners explaining the basics. I assume you just won't be lost when I will be talking about adding components or creating collections. This is also not an extensive tutorial about learning programming, though we will be writing a lot of code in Lua and I will be explaining it. I can only say that writing code in Lua is really simple and intuitive and you can learn it while making your first game very easily. Remember this will be a little longer tutorial and I will explain more in depth how things work. But I also have another video series on making a simpler game, a Space Invaders clone that you can actually make in less than an hour. There are multiple ways to make a platformer and I can't make all the types at once, so I am choosing the most common one, with tile-based maps and very simple mechanics. When you learn the basics, you can then extend your project with your own ideas. In the first videos I will show you how to set up your project and make a basic scene, a map of your level using tile maps and a sprite component representing the player's character. Next, we will handle very basic player movement, so we'll learn about basic scripting and inputs handling, and in the following videos we will be adding more and more features to make it a fully functional game. When you open up default you can already check out tutorials and there is a platformer example as well. You can open it and run by choosing Project Build or a shortcut Ctrl B to play around. You can also for example open the level time up and draw something. You will notice how intuitive it is and when you build the game again the changes you made will be instantly interacting with the character. I will explain later on how this happened. But as a proper tutorial we will make a game from scratch. Select File Open Project to open a new instance of the default editor and select a new project from an empty project template. Write down a name of your project and eventually assign a new directory location for the project files. When you are ready click Create New Project. Default will download and set up the project from the empty template. This is the default editor, which consists of three main columns. On the left side you can see the Assets pane, which is a representation of the project directory and here you can see in a tree view all the files and used libraries. In the middle you see a main editor view and for now it is just a preview of a markdown readme file with some basic information. On the right side you can see an outlined and properties pane and this will be usually different for different components types. On the bottom you can also see another pane which consists of few tabs, console where printed output from running application will be showing, curve editor used for particle effects and two self-explanatory tabs, build errors and search results. You will usually start every default project by checking out the game.project file. This file is read and executed as a first file in the default application lifecycle and must be contained in the project's directory. This is also a file you will be using to open the default project in the default editor when you select to open the project from disk. It contains basic information about your application, but also entry files, main collection and render file that describe where you will be starting your game and how it will be rendered. We don't need to go into details of rendering, but note I have a video explaining both the rendering pipeline in default and the powerful rendering script for your custom rendering needs. Go to the main collection and now you will see a proper editor for collections, which has a coordinate system drawn and nothing in it for now. Check out how you can navigate here using the middle mouse button to paint the view and when you hold the control key and use the left mouse button you can rotate the view and discover the third dimension. Yes, everything in default is 3D but we can very easily make a 2D game. Moreover, the set default render is using an orthographic projection which is used for 2D games and that's why we don't need to modify it to make a 2D platformer. You can also zoom in and out with a mouse wheel or a combination of alt key and right mouse button. Let's set up a basic scene. We will have at first just a character and a simple level. We need images for our sprites and tile maps and you can easily find a lot of free assets online. 
For this tutorial I will be using the assets for a platformer game from Kenny. I personally love pixel art, but for this tutorial I will be using high definition cartoon assets from the platformer pack Redux. In the default assets pane I create a folder called assets and inside I create a folder called images where I will copy the downloaded files for the character and the tile maps. And now let's create an atlas file, which is a gallery of images for our sprite component that will be representing our hero. So now in the outline you can select add images to add them to our atlas, select the ones representing the hero and click OK. You can also set up animations here, traditional flipbook animations that default will be displaying one by one. Create a new animation group and name it idle. Idle animation in our case consists of only one static frame, so drag and drop the image below and you can just select play mode to none, so it will not be animated actually. Then add another animation group and call it run. This time run animation consists of two frames, so drop the images below and adjust the frame rate here, something around 10 would be ok. This time the play mode should be selected as loop forever, so the character will run constantly. You can always preview the animation in the Atlas editor with the space key. So we have set up an idle and run animations in Atlas now and I will add a game object to our main collection with a component of type sprite. In the main collection, in the outline, right click on the collection root element and select add game object. Then right click on this new game object instance in the outline and select add component. You will see a drop list with few components that could be added directly to the game object select the sprite component. And now you will see many more properties for the selected sprite component. Choose image property and select the atlas we created. And then change default animation property to idle. That's it, we have our hero now. So now the level. We will use the built-in default tile maps and tile sources for this. Tile source is an image that is sliced into square tiles, which you can put on a grid repeatedly and in the end create a level, a tile map. Tile source is similar to Atlas, but Atlas is packed out of images of different dimensions. And tile source can consist of only one image, and this image is created in a way that could be sliced into tiles. To create a tile source, right click on the target directory, in our case the assets folder, and select new tile source. Type a name, for example level, and click create tile source. It will open up in a new editor view, but there is no image selected, so click on an image property and select the sprite sheet tiles file. This is a huge image consisting of tiles of size 128 pixels, so change the tile width and height properties to match this. Check if everything looks fine. You might need to adjust the other properties sometimes, like for example when the image is composed of separate tiles, then a tile spacing or inner padding properties might need adjustments. Here we also have a default value of extrude borders property set to 2. This might help sometimes avoid visible sewing between the tiles. Now create a tile map. Right click again on the assets folder, select new tile map, type a name and create it. You instantly should see the one property that is crucial for the tile map to exist, and it's a tile source. So select the one we just created. And in this tile map editor in the outline pane, you can see the layers of the tile map. Tile maps can consist of many layers and those can have different Z values, meaning they could be drawn behind or on top of each other. But for now we will use only one. When you have one layer selected, you can use the space key to open a preview of your tile source as a pop-up on top of the tile map editor. In this mode, you select which tile you would like to put on your tile map. Select with a left mouse button and then draw this tile with the left mouse button as well. Play around and draw your basic scene. Sadly, the built-in editor only supports this way of drawing from the tile source for now, but maybe in the future this will be enhanced. I would call it a stamp mode, where you only have one tile and could place it anywhere. If you want to stamp a larger area, a set of tiles, you can still just select those tiles from the tile map and clone them around. For basic needs it is definitely enough, but you can also check out external editors like Tiled or Tile Setter that are compatible with default and can export default tile maps. Ok, we would like to include our tile map in the game, so get back to your main collection and as you are now familiar with the process, add a new game object. 
I will name it level and rename our previous game object to hero and then add a component to the level game object from file. So select add component file and search for the tile map you created. If you put the objects in the top right corner from the origin of the coordinate system, you should see the level. You can now try your game. Build it with project build or control B and check out what you see. If the character is rendered behind the tile map, change its Z value to something larger than default zero. Larger Z values force objects to be drawn in front and smaller in back. By default, the sprites or tile maps are drawn on screen if the Z value is in the range between minus one and one. So for now, try to be inside this range, but you can of course change it later on. And that's it, we have our basic scene now. Let's recap what we learned. We started from an empty project template. We created our very first resources for our game, an atlas, a gallery of images representing our hero that also included flipbook animations, and a tile source, a similar gallery of images but this time consisting of square images called tiles. We then utilized those resources in components, sprite for our hero and the tile map for our level. We drew a basic scene and included everything in the main collection below corresponding game objects. And in the end, we built our scene. In the next video, we'll start coding some movement and adding collisions. And now a shout out to my supporters on different portals like Patreon, Coffee, GitHub sponsors, and now also here, directly on YouTube. I managed to join the YouTube Partner program and maybe I will earn some small income from it, so don't be mad at me when an ad appears. It's all possible thanks to you being here and watching my videos, so I would like to thank you for your support and engagement. Stay tuned for the next videos.